welcome to diagnosis today we are going to discuss a case of xylography and in detail the steps involved in xylography this is a opg of a middle aged female patient who visited us with a complaint of recurrent pain and swelling in the left submandibular gland she has already been subjected to usg ct without any conclusive results she has also extracted 36 she has done endodontic treatment in 35 we thought xylography would give us some positive results in this particular case so we went ahead with xylography xylography is a procedure by which a radio opaque contrast medium is injected into one of the main major salivary gland ducts xylography has got three phases phase 1 is the preparatory phase in which we take a scout radiograph to make sure the patient positioning is fine and whether there is any presence of radio opaque calculi whether there is any superimposition of normal anatomic structures like hyoid bone in this particular case in this left submandibular gland region and then we go on to the second phase the second phase is the most important phase it is called as the filling phase in which the duct orifice is probed it's dilated and cannulated with the help of xylographic cannula in this particular case we cannulated the left submandibular duct following which the contrast medium is injected what literature says is that we have to inject around 0.5 ml of contrast medium for submandibular gland but in this particular case we injected around 1.5 ml using a simple injection technique the contrast medium we used was iohexone which is a non ionic aqueous solution which has the advantage that the patient doesn't feel any discomfort during procedure and the disadvantage is that we get poor contrast images when we compare it with oil based solutions now we have to take a radiograph to assess the status of ducts and the gland this is the radiograph taken after introduction of the contrast medium we can appreciate the xylographic cannula the contrast medium entering the left wartens duct and the terminal ducts normally the main duct of submandibular gland is of even diameter which is around 3 to 4 mm wide and it gradually tapers towards the periphery the normal xylographic appearance of submandibular gland is called as bush in winter appearance in this case we can appreciate abnormal ductal dilatation in the middle portion of the duct the duct is more than 6 mm wide in that particular region another interesting finding is the presence of an irregular shaped radiolucency which is adherent to the lower portion of duct this irregular radiolucency is called as radiolucent xylolith always keep in mind that around 50% of parotid xyloliths and 20% of submandibular xyloliths are poorly calcified hence making as very difficult to diagnose them using plain film radiographs this radiolucent xylolith is the cause for consistent pooling of saliva in that particular region leading to recurrent salivary gland infection and pain the third phase in xylography is called as emptying phase where 
we allow the contrast medium to flow back into the oral cavity. So we can ask the patient to gently massage the gland. We can also make use of lemon to bring back the contrast medium to the oral cavity. Any residual contrast medium left in the gland could pose secondary infection and also foreign body reaction. The chances of dye stagnation within the duct is very less for water-based solutions like what we used. The post-op radiograph also gives us some idea regarding the extent of gland function apart from knowing the dye retention pattern. Now, with the invention of cone beam computer tomography, Silography has entered another level where we can evaluate the ductal architecture three-dimensionally three by using CBCT silograms. CBCT silogram we will discuss separately in another session. Meet you all in another video with another interesting case. Thank you.